Hello everyone, we are here today to actually uh, implement the new conversion API uh, from Facebook uh, in connection with Shopify. Basically, uh, recently Shopify just launched the new conversion API which makes it really, really easy for any store owner to actually implement uh, in few clicks the new conversion API. The conversion API, just to give a little bit of background, uh, it's a server-side integration that allows for better tracking during um, when we send event from Shopify to Facebook in order you, you know to track conversion and revenue. Before it was only based on a pixel but uh, due to the recent uh, implementation from Safari, Cookie, pro uh, privacy privacy you know limitation that we have right now, uh, sometimes the cookie do not track perfectly the transaction in uh, Facebook. And for this reason, uh, Shopify just uh, launched these features which allow you to basically track uh, uh, together with the pixel as well as the server side integration, the transaction. This allow you to have a much better integration and much better actually uh, matching between transaction that happen on Shopify and then your advertisement uh, that you spend and your budget that you spend on over Facebook. In order to set up, this is pretty straightforward and really requires just a few clicks. All you have to do is make sure that you have the latest Facebook channel added to your store. So just go under sales, sales channel, press the plus and just add Facebook. Once, once that's done, this is the screen that you will see and all you have to do is just click connect account. Here you connect your account, continue. Continue. Okay. Now it asks you to actually link the business manager so you connect whatever business manager you are using for your store. In this case, I'm using uh, this business manager for testing. So I connect. That's done. I select the page that I want to connect. Let's say that I want to connect this page. I click connect. And here I can choose. Here is where the server side integration comes uh, handy. Basically, as you can see, we have the standard level. By default, Shopify will leave you to this option enhanced only because um, they cannot actually move the default one to be maximum because this needs to be done from a client side. So you as a merchant, you should do that. And uh, so basically, as you can see here, advanced matching basically tracks personal information about, you know, customer, including name and location uh, and phone number and everything. This is, pix this is pixel based, right? Meanwhile, when you click on maximum, which is what you should be doing, basically this combines all data tracking together. So conversion API plus the Facebook pixel. And uh, if you're, you know, if you're asking, okay, but Am I going to record actually double uh, uh, transaction because I'm using conversion API as well as pixel? No, not really, because as far as you use the Shopify checkout and after the customer make the purchase, um, basically in, before sending the transaction data to Facebook, in this case, there's a match between potentially the email address or the EP address, IP address or phone number. So any customer data, they match between the pixel and the um, conversion API. And if there is a match, only one transaction event will be sent. Meanwhile, sometimes one, when we are actually losing, potentially uh, in this case, we are losing maybe some transaction over a specific time, period of time. Then in this case, if maybe the, cast, the user were, were using like Safari with ad blocker, for example, Maybe via pixel, we are not tracking the conversion that should be attributed to actually Facebook, but via the conversion API, this is tracked. And so the event, so the purchase event is actually sent to Facebook in this case. So you just select maximum, then uh, you just double check the tracking details. As you can see, these are all the details that are sent to, um, that are sent via the conversion API and pixel. And then I will show you later on if you want to change that, what's gonna, how it look like. And here you just have to, co to connect the pixel. So in this case, I connect, for example, this pixel, click connect. 
then at this step, you simply have actually just to create a new commerce account in case you don't have it. So you just click on create new, create new. Let's wait a few seconds. Okay, then just review terms and condition, accept terms and conditions, and then finish setup. And that's pretty much it really really quick and simple and then you have an overview actually then if everything's okay you see facebook shop is active product approved in this case one product you can customize your shops and uh, here you have a full overview in case you want to go back and change some settings simply go back to settings and here you can change everything needed in this case you will see that there is like a red mark in case something need to be approved or changed in this case for example finish marketing setup in case you didn't have it before so I just make sure that I connect cor correctly. I select the country and I accept. And simple, that's it. You just review, go back maybe to data sharing just to review that everything's okay. Set up to maximum, so happy to go from here. In case you want to double check which data are sent from Shopify to actually Facebook, you can go directly here under the data source for your pixel and if you scroll down under advanced matching, you will see all the different options. So in this case, as you can see, the information that are shared between uh, uh, Facebook and Shopify, in this case, is like email address and phone number. If you want, I don't know, to enable, for example, the town city or uh, gender, first name and surname, this is totally up to you. And, uh, but the key one will be anyway, email address or phone number. And why? Because those are the information that actually the customer will provide directly. Potentially, even if you have a pop-up, uh, when you collect, I don't know, the email from, uh, or uh, subscribe to the newsletter or actually to make a transaction, you know, in order to make a transaction, the customer must include usually either email address or phone number. And that's pretty much it then um, you can have an overview about the event. Um, in this case, this is just a test store and uh, you, you will see later on that actually, you know, the events start to match much better than actually was happening before. Let me show you actually a couple of screenshots uh, from another account where you can see the, the column that show the event matching quality. So as you can see here, for example, seven, I just activated for, um, for one of my client, in this case, the um, the connection method uh, server server side, and as you can see here, this is mentioned browser and server. Currently, the only data, accordingly to Shopify, the only data that are actually sent uh, via conversion API are the purchase event. In fact, as you can see here, you will you see actually browser and server. Probably they will integrate sooner probably also the page view, view content, add to cart and other information, but those for now are just tracked via pixel. So that's why it becomes very, very important to have these um, features enabled as soon as possible. Here you will see the event matching quality. So 7.8 out of 10, soon we will reach 10 out of 10. And uh, it's not really, there's no other information regarding if you're using recharge, for example, or Kartook, there's no really information about yet uh, if those are tracked via server side as well, uh, conversion API. I guess so, because soon Kartook will be directly integrated into the Shopify checkout, so I wouldn't worry about that. For Recharge, meanwhile, uh, because they use an external checkout, I guess same thing, they will soon integrate with Shopify, so soon will be everything working via conversion API. Either way, I just suggest you to go ahead, integrate that, enable the conversion API for better tracking, and that's then how it will look like. So enjoy and uh, talk soon.